Rebecca. Can you say that again slower? <laughs> Your name. For you that didn't get it, I'll say it pole pole. Uh, my name is Pastor Wayne Wickware from United States of America. This is my eighth trip to Kenya, so I'm not new to Kenya, and I'm here on uh, mission work. I go into the prisons here. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate, let's celebrate. Amen. So how many of you got one of the names? Wayne, yeah. Wayne, well, 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 something, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's a good one to, to look at. Let's go back. Let's go back to where we were. Let's go back to where we were. Amen. We stopped yesterday addressing your victory is in partnership with God. Your victory, your remedy is in partnership with God. Moses said, Lord, if your presence is not coming with us, there is no destiny away from God. Moses explains the fact that the promised land is no promised land if God is not in the promised land. In other words, Moses is telling God, we don't want the location called Canaan. We want the location called God. The legitimacy, therefore, of that place called Canaan is the presence of God, not the presence of Moses. In simple words, what Moses is saying is, Lord, the wilderness is better off than the promised land if God is on board. I think that's the principle Moses is saying. I wouldn't want anything called success away from God. And I think that's what the book of the Acts of the Apostles says. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. And I think we've said several here, our journey is within God. We enter in God, we drive through God or walk within God, and our ultimate is God. The transaction of life is within an environment called God. And, and Moses says, if your presence is not going with us, Peter Itosha, if your presence is not going with us, let not any of us make any progress without God. Because listen, friends, you are only found within God. Outside God, you are lost. Whatever you call, wherever you are, whatever you achieve, if God is not on board, you're going nowhere. Because direction is God. Testing is God. The reason for living is God. Breath is God. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the promised land. He is the promiser. He is the bread of life. He is eternity. There is no heaven minus God. If God left heaven, Heaven becomes, uh, I don't know what it becomes. Imagine heaven without God. Does that make sense? That you arrive in heaven and you are told God left. How many of you would want to go to high heaven where there is no God? So do you want to go to heaven or you want to go to God? So the question is, must you get to heaven to be in God or you can be in God here? How do you guarantee that partnership with God? Partnership with? The Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build, those who labor, labor but in vain. I want to show you two, three things that I think are important, and then I will give you a principle that I think we need to learn today. I want you to know that everything we live for was established by God for the relevance of man within the boundaries of God. I want to explain that. Everything we live for, whether you call it a dream, whether it's your agenda, the Bible talks about location that God determined countries. Their boundaries, we blame the white man that he came and subdivided Africa. The Bible says God caused that to happen. He determined boundaries Location where people would live. Because location gives relevance to a community of people. He determined the time. And the people, and he said the purpose is that they may know God. He established an institution called family. 
Now listen, family is not husband and wife having babies. Family is the attribute of God in an institution where formation is made by a man and a woman. I, I hope that makes sense. You and your wife don't make family. It is the principle of God that makes family courtesy of the two of you. That's why the Bible says, unless the Lord builds it, thank God I come from here. Unless the Lord builds it. Listen, you can marry an angel. If the principle is not God, you just have one extra problem. You know what I'm talking about? Money is a divine principle. Money in itself, the Bible says, money outside God is a God. That's why money has a power to twist you. It can actually dictate to your behavior. Money can actually determine your appetite. It can determine your sleep. It can determine your dreams. It can determine your friends. It can determine your blood pressure. Look at your neighbor. You can tell how much money they have. Yes. Outside God, it's a struggle. Listen, friends, without God, we are mere piece of clay. Life is in God. It is God. It is of God. It is within God. Ultimately, it is God. Listen, we can't love without the love of God. So anything we call love is a reflection of how much God is in us. The Bible says for a woman to submit, it is the principle of Christ. For a man to love, it's a principle of Christ. For anybody to serve, including slaves, the Bible says servants or slaves, you submit to your boss as unto the Lord. They must be God within the question. Life outside God is like going around the mountain. It's meaningless, it's useless. And a wise man in the Bible helps us not to repeat the mistakes he did. He said you can acquire 300 wives plus 700 concubines. Which one were more? The concubines or the wives? Who are the 700? The wives or the concubines? The wives were how many? 700. Concubines? For what? But he said, listen, the man had the wisdom that could not be explained. But he says, listen, outside God, it's vanity. It's meaningless. Can I tell you something? Look at your age and look at your past and realize time not invested in God he was, is wasted daily. And guess what? If you don't begin the journey in God, you've never begun life. Because life begins in God. It, it's, it's called in a language that will be broke down into what you understand. Purpose, vision, dreams, you, you know, th those things that gives you meaning. But, but guess what, friends? If it is not in God, it's just another activity. Making sense to somebody? Yes. Do you want a future? The future is in God. Amen. Listen, my friends, you can have children that never reflect you in terms of influence. If God doesn't help, the Bible says children are a reflection of upbringing. The Bible says train them. I look at that word train. It literally comes from the word train, the locomotive. Train. You know what a train is? A train is called a train because it is trained. It's called a train. What does that mean? It's way or it's highway is predetermined. It is trained. If you ignite it in Mombasa, it will arrive in Kambala without a pilot because it is trained. Haisimami kwa mutu? Haisimamishu na mutu? Inasimama kwa station? Kwa wakati waki? Wese simamisha train? Hey, niko na musiko hapa kwa angu itawaletea utajiri. Eh, eh, gari ya moshi haisimamishu. Ebu ni saidi ya mbejira ni angu hiyo, mimi ni hiyo locomotive. I uh, was locomotive when your engine. <laughs> Listen, the principle of life is God. Now, I want to show you a remedy in life that I think is very important. And I want you to listen to me from a, an African perspective. Every location you occupy today was initially occupied by someone. 
you are not the origin of either the culture, your name, your background, your location, and the practice. Somebody has practiced with your practice before you are. Make sense? Jina lako, kwenu, tabia yenu, mienendo, na culture yako, ilianzishwa na watu kabla ya wewe. Kwa hivyo inamanisha, mwelekeo na tabia na mwenendo wa hiyo culture, sio wewe mwanzilishi. Nataka kuwaonyesha suluhu ya kufunja vituko vya laana na vambavyo vinafuata watu. Niliwambia kuna ile ya kufuga. Yule mtu anaanzisha laana yake kivyake. Lakini kuna hivi vitu. Kwa mfano, ushatambua jina la mtu lina uweso na mtu. Tukiwa shule, nikiwa Bible school miaka fulani, kulikuwa na ndugu alikuwa anaitwa Masikini. Na tulikuwa na ndugu alikuwa anaitwa Kasuku. Wajeni mwampia kitu fulani Hiyo jina lako ilitoka kwenu Na ujui kwa nini uliitua kip Ama onyango Ama wafula Uliitanishwa Luga na tabia Ya kwenu Ukaitua kimayo Ukaitua wanjiro Ukaitua mumbi Eh Ukaitua wanjohi. Aha. Ukaitua kip nge 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 nge. Chep, 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 chep. Haujui kwa nini? Wakale wangabu wako hapa. Wangabu wenu mshua chua kwa wakale. Majina ya wakale iko na uke kuliko ume. Kwa sababu mungu ya wakale ni wakike. Si wakiume. Anaitua cheptalel. Hakuna kabila hiko na mungu wakiume. Wakikuyu anaitua yao mumbi. Mwanamuke badu. Waluya wanaita nini yao? Jehova. 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 Wacha na Jehova wanyonyi Jehova wanyonyi ni muluyo alikuwa hapa Wajalua wanaita nini mungu ya wajalua Wajalua hapa ni wajalua wataon Sikia Miungu yote ya wafrika Ni wakike Hakuna mungu wa kiume Afrika Na fikiri nita wafundisha kuhusu miungu Lakini That's why kila mwanadamu anaitwa mwafrika furaha yake ni kupata mwanamke tunafanyia kazi wanawake tunatafuta wanawake furaha yetu ni mwanamke bidii yetu ni mwanamke kwa sababu Mungu wetu ni wa kike nasiasema kitu let's go back to partnership i'm serious i'm serious that's right Genesis chapter 12. Sasa umbaba mwenye amekuja kama missionary. Our friend who's come from the US to go to the prisons to help our brothers and sisters. He's sharing the love of God. But you, you, you'll ask yourself a question. What makes a man keep going to prison knowing that those who are in prison are suffering? And, and, and I don't want to be very negative, but we people of color, the, the black of us, we are dominant in prison. I went to a country somewhere and I discovered the majority of the people in prison were black. A country somewhere below, beyond the Pluto is not in this earth. <laughs> Genesis chapter 12, verses 8. I'm sorry I'm saying too many things at once. From there, he pulled up he stand backs and departed to the mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar 
to the Lord. I want you to hear the word, an altar to the Lord. Very important in what we've been learning for the last one month. Abraham went to a new location. Initially occupied by strange people. Therefore, the land was a subject to the former occupants. What they did there, whom they buried there, what they planted there, what sacrifice they offered there. Unless Abraham would invite God into his new location, he would still be subject to the previous activities. Muko na mimi? Nataka kuwa promise kitu moja. Either kabla ya mwisho wa mwaka huu ama next year, niwaambie namna kutafuta mtu wa kuoa. Kwa sababu wengi wenu mnaoa mtu town, haujui kwao. Haujui tabia yake. Alafu na realize hukuoa mtu mmoja. <laughs> Una realize hukuoa nini? Mtu mmoja. Na wanawake mnaelewa kitu ninasema? Hmm. So nilikuwa nasema nini? Ah, wacha mtu mmoja na kwa neno. Abraham found a land that was initially occupied. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, every community controls land through the worship of their gods. And remember what I said yesterday. You are born again. Your business is not. That's why Roman says, nature, creation, is awaiting for the redemption of the sons of God. Listen, while Christ redeemed you, you are the redeemer of the land. But you do that by invitation. That's why we go to sinners. That's why we are a redemption to our family. We are a link. We are the intercessors. We are the bridge. Listen, our currency in Kenya is not born again. It is only subject to the carrier or the older or the current occupant or possessor. Now listen, any location retain the identity of the former ownership until something is done to transform it. Mm. That's why we dedicate land, because we don't assume. L let me give you a very good example. Oh, it's Pastor Kim. Pastor Kim, right there. I put some piece of land somewhere past the airport, just behind the airport. About three acres or something. And um, I kept my sister there. And, you know, gave her some of the gift I received. Because that was my village farm. You take a cow there, you take something there. And I realized every time you take animals there, they die. And then after a while, my sister went back to her home. Pastor Kim lives there now. But he realized all the animals that he took, within a very short time, they die. And then I was like, what's wrong? Then I discovered we did not dedicate the land. Hello? Unaesa nunua shamba na deni ambaya asuna sumenge kwa yyo shamba deni ya ishi. Pesa ya kulipa deni haipatikani kwa sababu musingi wa shamba ni deni. Ni kama kuoa mwanamke mwenye aliachwa na hakudili na kuachwa. So anaolewa na bado hako na mawaso ya kuachwa. So kila siku anatarajia yaliopita. Ha? Yeah? 
Ni kama ku, 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 kuwa na mtu kama mimi ambaye hakuwahi ona baba. Shida moja nilikuwa nayo ni hii. Sikuwa na mwanaume maisha yangu niliita baba. Mtu wa kwanza niliita baba maisha yangu ni 1994. Mzee Mwei, Apostle Mwei. Huyo ni mtu wa kwanza nilimuita baba. Na nilingangana kusema hiyo kitu ba ba ba. Nilikuwa ngumu. Alafu Mungu ananiinua hapa nataka nikuwe baba ya watu. Sijui ku baba ni kitu gani. Ilibidi Mungu anifanyie kazi. Ni kama kupea mtu pesa mali mwenye alitoka kwa umaskini. Atakuwa na milioni ishirini kwa account na wewe unanunua suruali. Kwa sababu pesa haipadilishi mtu. Mtu lazima abadilike ndiye atumie pesa. Mnaelewa kinyesema? Yeah. Yeah. Unakuta mtu ako na pesa kwa account na wewe unanunua nguo moja. Analala njaa. Mtu wako na shilingi elfu tano hapa na natembea usiku saa tano mpaka langas miguu Hiyo sio kuchunga pesa ni pepo ya umaskini U, umekalia pesa mpaka imechukua form ya makalio Unanunua nguo ambayo unafaa mara moja kwa mwaka kwa harusi za watu na matanga za watu ndio watu waone nguo uko nayo pepo ashindwa fululizo uko na mke ambaye hauna amani kwa sababu unaokopa mwanaisa chukuliwa na mtu so kila siku ni ulikuwa na nani nani alikuona mpaka unaweka maspice kuchunga mke sikia by the way kama unachunga mke ama mume uko nayo hauna hauna wanasema ndege nzuri ni ile inajua nyumbani ndege ya kufungwa ni ndege ya kusafiri <laughs> Anasema wachilia ndege akirudi nyumbani ni yako. <laughs> That's why sikia. Usiolewe na kunguru. Olewa na njiwa. Kwa sababu njiwa atatoka kwa meli ya Noa. Ataenda mpaka kwa ardhi. Atachukua nyasi, kipichi na recheshe kwa meli. Olewa na kunguru uone. Ataenda huku apate misoga ya watu atakula mutaelewa mukikoma <laughs> nasikia hakuna vile unaweza fundisha kunguru asikule nyama hata ukipaka rangi akuwe mweupe bana siwe abraham understood three principles When you arrive in a place build an altar principle number one. in whatever you do don't be too far from the reach of the altar that blesses or blessed you transact business within the reach of your altar lord jesus help me to say this transact your business your dreams within the reach of your altar mnaelewa kingereza yangu hakikisha usifanye biashara usifaulu usichukue jamii yako na biashara yako mbali na madhabahu because altars preserve dreams pandiko wangu kwa dada sangu niwaambie kitu moja Shetani nilisema jana Biblia nasema alikuja kuiba kuua na kuharibu Kanuni za Mungu inatusaidia to live within what we call the proximity of an altar All divine principles helps us to make sure wherever we go whatever we do we are within the reach of the altar abraham understood the gods of that land will influence what he does unless he brings his god Amen. david understood when the ark of the covenant was with the philistines they lost battles 
he had to go and search for the ark of the covenant. Listen, friends, they went to war with the ark of God. Because victory has to come from God. Amen. Practice through the principles of his ordinances. Amen. Somebody's asking a question. What do you mean by stay within the proximity of an altar? Let me explain what that is. Altars bless. Altars grow. Altars preserves. Altars protect. Okay? Now listen. Mungu wa kikubariki kama mahali baraka yako iko na ulinzi weka maono yako na ndoto sako kwa madabao ukienda makaribi kaskasini kusini na mashariki hakikisha ukipiga nduru madabao iko mahali na kusikia kama utakimbia utafikilia kabla hujashikwa na mwewe Am I speaking to you? Yes. Transact your business within the proximity of your altar. I want to recommend very basic principles. Love your church. Amen. It is your safe. It's your safety. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, your pastor is not your enemy. Your church should never be a bother. Your church is an altar of your security. When you hear a voice that says it doesn't matter, the thief is within reach. My friends, I recommend to you, you used to go to church when you, are, you had no vehicle to drive to the village on Sunday. Stop it. Stop it. When you are poor, nobody visited you on Sunday because you are broke and poor. Stop visitors on Sunday. When you are not blessed, you have no car to take to car wash. Stop it. There were times you had no clothes to wash. Stop it. There were times you had no bed to sleep on. Don't use it on Sunday. Preserve your dreams. On an altar. Amen. If you are offended by a pastor, go to another church. The problem is this. The problem you run from always runs with you. And the probability is that we will find you in prison someday. <laughs> because offense develops to an extent it becomes bitterness. And bitterness are never satisfied until they have administered revenge. And you know where revenge takes you to? Prison. Love your church. Go to church. Yes. Serve in church. Yes. It is to your advantage. Wacha na yo uchingati mapasta ni wakora. Wacha na yo vitu. Kama ajawai kukuibia. Habari ya kuletewa ni ya nini? Hebu nisaidie mwambie jirani kaka kanisani. Na ukiona aongee alihama huyu mtu. Ka wapi? Kanisani. I am offended by who? I have, how many times have you been offended in your place of work? Why didn't you quit? How many times have you been offended in your marriage by your boyfriend, by your parents? Why didn't you shift? Why is it so easy to leave church? Offended by who? If you find a patient in an hospital, leaving the clinic because they are offended by another patient. They are not sick. <laughs> A sick man doesn't care how the other patient smells. We don't even give them room to skip us. Because everybody is sick at their level. Nitaomba mungu kwangu. Kwa hiyo room. Rento. Ati mungu wako kila mali. Apo penye unasema. Apo, apo. Apo unaotea ukifukusu wa kila usiku. Ukianguka kwa shimu. Mungu wako kwa hiyo nyumba. 
Mawazo uko nayo kwa hiyo nyumba ni mbofu. Unawatea ukikufa. Mungu wako hapo. Kwenda huko. Hiyo room ambayo hakuna mwanamke anakupenda. Mungu wako hapo. Hebu nisaidie mwambie jirani yako enda kanisa. Yes. Stay within your church. Yes. Serve in church. Yes. Hey. Yes. Stay in church. Yes. And I want to pray for somebody today. If you stop going to church, I came to tell you, yes. go back to church. Yes. If you can no longer enjoy that church, move to another church. But be in church. And like I said again, if you go around all churches and you discover all churches are imperfect, open one. Yes. And let your fellows join you. Yes. Can I tell you something? Even if your pastor is unschooled, he has one trouser. Respect that man. Yes. Even if he has three members, respect that man. Yes. It takes the grace of God to minister to three people every Sunday on one trouser and keep them coming. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Listen, you did not vote me here. I don't pay you for coming. But you leave your work and come. This is not a good speech. This is life changing someone. Amen. Anybody who has contributed to your spiritual development, obey any man of God. Amen. Whether it is your pastor or the pastor of the other church, Amen. respect graces. Amen. Respect men and women of God. Amen. And refuse these hawkers who keep hawking curses by bringing you stories about men and women of God. Yes. If you can't stand somebody calling your mama a stupid story, you should not stand a pastor's story. Yes. Love the men of God and the women of God for that matter. The altar of your spiritual nourishment is important. Let me tell you quickly. Abraham built four major altars. Number one, he built an altar of provision. You remember he said Jehovah the provider. Abraham linked his resources to a God of provision. I want to recommend this to you for free. Tithe. Your tithe is linked to the God of provision. Listen. Salvation gives you the right of sonship. Huh? Remember God is diverse in expression, but he's one in, in, as a personality. He has three levels of expression, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that is purely function. He is, he is, he is our banner, he is our shield, he is our all those things, but listen, he is also our provider. You trigger the grace of provision on a, an altar. Link your resources to an altar. Amen. Fight your economic battles on an altar. Amen. I recommend for free. Otherwise, what wa mungu utaunda pesa, utatafuta pesa Kenya hii. Ita kuhepa. Ita kuhepa. Nasikia, ata ukipata pesa, unarealize kuna pesa unapata, ingawa uko naso, haishuguliki shida hako. Ukwe ule mtu ambaye kiongesewa mshara, shida inaongeseka. Ama mwelevu pitu mina sema, Kuna ugonjwa iwezi kuja kwako kama una pesa ya maana? Hata ugonjwa yenyewe unajua tunaenda tu kusumbukana bure. Tungoje huyu mtu apate pesa. That's why kuna ugonjwa ya maskini. Mm. Ushasikia kuna maskini amekufa blood pressure? Ya nini? Blood pressure ni ya matajiri. Nasumbuliwa na pesa. Hii ni malaria. <laughs> Because I'm mosquito net. <laughs> Fight your economic battles within the proximity of an altar. Thank you for the amen. Number two, Abraham built an altar of peace, relationships. It begins, I've already mentioned, be in good terms with your parents. It guarantees peace. There is no victory 
in fighting with your parents. I don't care what they did to you. They are your parents. You're alive. They wanted to miscarry you. You did not. So you're here. They didn't take you to school. Schools are still open. Go to school. They didn't love you. God loves you. And if you want something tangible, come. Can I love you now? Tell somebody I love you. Any more problem about love? No. Build an altar of peace. Listen. David, David aliambiwa, sikia history. Mutawadu maisha. Dawdi aliambiwa, ingawa umekusanya materials ya kuchenga nyumba ya mungu. Sikia hii. Ingawa umekusanya materials ya kuchenga nyumba ya mungu. Sita kuruhusu uchenge nyumba ya mungu. Kwa sababu mikono yako imeja damu. Sikia. Uchichunga na vita ya wa kristo. Usimwak, usikuwe kwa kila vita. Kila story kwa kanisa usikuwe ndani. Kwa nini? Ukisoe ya vita. Mikono yako inaesajaa damu ya vita. Mbaka mungu wa kuambie. Mikono yako imejaa damu ya wapendo. Wesi chenga ekalu. Usi, sikia chunga mikono yako isikuse damu ya ndoa sa watu. Because by the time unataka kuchenga ndoa. Unambuwe yu mikono imejaa damu ya ndoa sa watu. Usikule pesa za watu. Sikuile unataka kuchenga uchumi wako. Mikono yako imejaa damu ya pesa za watu. Ni mbaya watu wakilia kwa sabu ulichukua pesa sao. Mbona muna ninyamazia? That's why sikia. Petting is evil, demonic. Stealing people's money in a craft manner. If you have ever joined petting, you need to repent. It's evil. It's demonic. It's not of God. It's for con men. <laughs> Stealing people's money in a craft manner. You don't tithe and you want to pet. You want to succeed in a demonic altar. Look at you. Family altars. Family altars. Kama huko na muke na huko na mume. Ama kuna mutu munaishi na he. Na ujaenda kuona wasasi wawo. Funga virako kabla ya mwaka ukuenda. Enda ubarikiwe. Unataka uchenga familia. Go to the parents. Honor the parents to your wife. Don't stay with somebody's daughter without acknowledging their source. You want to build a family? Go put the foundation well. Spiritual altars. Kama umeansa kanisa, na ulikuwa sana baba yako wakiro, enda, rechesha kabla mchengo jaenda juu. Itanguka. Siasira imeisha. Enda kwa baba yako mambia. Na usiele kuambia, uli likuwa sea, uli ngenya, aa, mambia likuwa utoto. Kwa nuna taka kushinda vita na baba yako ya nini? Unambia likuwa utoto wangu, likuwa teenage, na tubu, na upeleke sadaka akubariki. Na urudi uchenge kanisa yako. Economic altars. Kama ulimba besa ya mudosi. Ama ulichukua customer wake. Ukambia, mkuja, nimehama, niko huko. Musikuja hapa. Wewe, wewe, wewe. Rudy. Ebo ni zaidi ambia jirani kumearipika hapa. My last statement. Anything that happens to you is either your harvest or somebody's seed. Kiti chochote inafanyeka kwa maisha yako. Either unafuna kenye ulifanya ama mtu anapanda enye atafuna. Yeah. Chochote inafanyeka kwa kwa. Kiti chochote unafanyiwa. Either unafuna kenye ulipanda kwa watu Ama mtu anapanda ya Kenya atafuna. Akikisha moyo wako iko sawa. Ili kile na kutendekea. Isikuwa ni mafuno. Kama ulikosa na baba wako akiro. Enda maali sana vizuri. Kama ulikosa na wasasi wako. Wenda musameane. Unaenda wapi. Tasunguka mlima ya maisha. Kama ulipa pesa mudosi ya mawatecha wake. Enda muombe musama. Mm-hmm. Kwa nini? 
Mdozi wako wako na wateja, lakini yako na neema. Ukichukua wateja bila neema watakasi kumbili wataenda. Ukichukua neema italete wateja wako wako. Usinyanganya baba yako shamba, waja kubariki upate yako wako. Kwa sababu mzee akikufa kabla ya kubariki shamba itakukataa. Aha. Na usipe mke ya mtu kuna wanawake wa kutosha. Oa yako. Na kama unaishi na mtu na unajua una mpango ya kumwacha, hiyo shughuli imeisha. Wewe si wacha sasa. Leo jioni kuanzia saa kumi na moja. We have a worship evening. Tunakuja tu tuna worship hakuna mahubiri. We have a moment of worship if you can join us this evening that would be good.